All right, everyone, this is personally the most exciting part of the build so far. It's the utilities, specifically the electrical system. So here we have it. This, these are the components, some of them, that are required to, that have to be installed in the, I'm calling it the utility closet for the electrical system. Real quick overview, we have the master main disconnect switch, large fuse block, bus bar, that we're gonna do a little customization. This is the negative shunt for the negative side of the uh, power source. This is another fuse block, large fuse block for the inverter, and then these are two small fuse blocks for all the components in, you know, throughout the camper. So that's what we gotta figure out how to fit. We are gonna take <clears throat> this extremely nice, brand new, Blue Sea branded, 1000 amp bus bar. So we're gonna take these off, just like that. We're gonna take this bus bar right here, we're gonna make it into two. We're gonna take this brand new eight pounds of copper bus bar, and we're gonna run, look at the ingredient, I mean, look at this. Look how nice this is. We're gonna cut this thing right in half. Boom, like that. We're gonna have a negative bus bar and a positive bus bar. We're gonna integrate these sides back into it. We're gonna make it so the cover just covers the positive side. And we are gonna have a sweet system for a very good price because of how good of a deal I got this bus bar for. We're gonna save like literally over $100 by doing this. This is the positive side. The other side of that. This here is going to go in here like that. So now we have a negative bus bar and a positive bus bar. We got a little slop, so there's nothing to hold the end parts of the bus bar in. We're going to do a little test here. We're going to try to apply a little bit of epoxy. Fill this with some epoxy here. And this stuff's five minute quick setting epoxy. Put it in there and then square it up pretty good. Let that set. All right, you're looking at the back side of this here. So we're gonna drill and tap this to keep this copper bus bar affixed to the uh, foot. So this is my center that I want. Give it a little pilot. On uh, 964th bit, which is the closest one I got for a number eight screw tap, 832. Hit it with the countersink. Give it a little tap magic here. Probably not too necessary, but it helps. Thread this in. You go forward and back a little bit to clear the chips. So I go about a full rotation and then I go backwards about half. You'll feel the chip come out. This isn't a how do you tap metal course. Okay, I think she's through. There you go, tapped. Here's the number eight screw. Goes right there. Done. It's not perfect, but you know what? For what it's gonna be holding, it's redundancy, it'll work. We got this scenario. So this is the positive bus bar here, and this is gonna be the one of the large ANL fuses. To save a little bit of cabling, I just, pop this stud out and just bolted that straight up onto bus bar to bus bar 
and it's a connection and we're done. You don't even need a cable, you don't even need nothing. And you just give it a little. Right, take this, shove this right in there. Oh my gosh, like it was meant to be. This is gonna be an inlet fuse, the main, and then this is gonna be all live with 12 volt hot positive power, and this is gonna be an output to the inverter in this case. So, let's keep on rolling. So this main disconnect switch is gonna have power coming in, in, and then there's a stud out. That's gonna feed the main fuse, which is gonna feed the bus bar here. So, instead of buying a cable, I bought a, this, in this case, it's inch and a quarter wide by quarter inch thick piece of copper. Industrial salvage yard, right? So I got this in the same, at the same salvage yard as the angle for the battery hold down. This piece of copper cost me $5. Cut this to length and, you know, two holes in here and then this is gonna connect here and here. Negative bus bar, Shantuga, mini bus bar to tie them. Done, tied together, negative from the battery coming in, going through the Shantuga all the way up. Holy macaroni, it's late, but we're getting stuff done. In video world, this stuff's, there is the Most of the heavy lifting electrical, all of your high amperage stuff. So we're making the battery cables here, my homemade way here. So these are a uh, solder slugs they have the lead and the flux built into them but these are two aught cables uh, fittings these are for three aught that's all they had so i cut them in half so now i have two of them in half and we'll just add a little bit of extra uh, solder in there Two six volt batteries. And there's the series connection. Hey, we have all of the batteries hooked in series, parallel. The negative battery is going in to the shunt, goes into the negative bus bar, and then this negative cable goes all the way into the inverter. That's the negative side, positive side. It's so right here, that connects there, goes into the main disconnect, goes down into the main, main uh, positive bus bar, out into the main fuse for the inverter hot side, goes into the inverter on the hot side. That's all of it. Now. Both the fuses are in, and this is gonna be the first time that we put power to everything, honestly, everything. Other than connecting the batteries together, this will be the first time that we put power to, you know, the whole system here, and then eventually turn on the inverter. So let's see. 
This shouldn't really do much of anything. Good. And this looks goofy because this is going to get tied up in the stuff. So this is going to be either crazy or nothing's going to happen. I hope nothing. Ready? The big switch. Good. And there's no hot cables, no fuses blue. That's what you're supposed to have. And in theory, this should go on. Oh. Wait. Let's put it on this one. Very exciting. <laughs> That's what you want though. You don't want problems. So the inverter is on. And it's just idle right now. And here's an ammeter around the positive side off the main uh, battery uh, connection here. And we got four amps uh, that's getting pulled. If we turn this off, it should be at nothing. All right, point two. The air produces that much, so. And then we're gonna plug in this really, really nice fan that I have. All right, so now here's the inverter plug. And uh, let's see. Oh. Five amps. That's a nice fan. That's a nice fan. <laughs> well, it works. We got power. This is alternating current. We got pulling five amps out of this piece. Listen to this poor thing. Let's let's just shoot it. My God. Start going crazy. Should we start hook a hair dryer up to the thing? See what this thing can do? We got a better device here. This thing says it'll pull 1875 watts. This is a 2500 watt inverter, so it should be able to run this beautiful hair dryer. We have the ammeter on the main battery cable coming in to, for the whole system, and we have a watt, uh, a kilowatt, a little watt reader that will, right now it's on volts, but we're gonna show how many watts is actually getting pulled on the AC side. Are you ready? This should piss it off because this is a lot. Let's try it on low. All right, 92 amps pulling out of this. 732 watts. We got 92 amps pulling. We're gonna put it on high. 164 amps and 1,600 watts. Got it. It's done. Let's shut her down.